Previously, on the road to Houston, former winners Alarion Supermileage from Canada watched in disbelief as their engine shattered. Holy! In Greensboro, North Carolina, the Dudley Panthers are building two electric cars from junk. But their test drive didn't go to plan. Whoa! I see, all right? And in Brazil, the E3 team struggled with broken crankshafts and warring co-captains. That's my plan B. I hate your plan B. Will any of our teams make it on the road to Houston? The severe winter weather in Quebec makes it impossible for Team Alarion Supermileage from Université Laval to test drive their car outside before going to the Shell Eco Marathon. But snow and ice do have some advantages. After a long night fixing and testing their broken engine, Guillaume and Louis David take to the slopes. But these guys never stop thinking. Skiing taught them about the importance of aerodynamics at an early age. At four years old, you learn when you talk, you go faster and you have a position that the wind flows over you. Yeah, skiing might be one of the sports where aerodynamics is the, the most important. So yeah, maybe we have a little advantage. A key component of Laval's success in Shell Eco Marathon is the aerodynamics of their cars. This year, the team has modified the design of their shell to reduce the drag on the car by nearly 14%. They're confident this will help beat their record of 3,168 miles per gallon of fuel. Having a really aerodynamic shell is our biggest advantage compared to other opponents because we have such a small drag coefficient, which is uh, 0.07. We are way ahead compared to uh, all the other team in America. Finally, the car is taking shape. The engine is fitted into the chassis for the first time. Everything is strapped down, the engine is in place, electronics ready, the computers are open, everything's plugged. We're just waiting to uh, make the car run. This is a big step forward from last year, when they never managed to test the engine in the car before the event in Houston. We actually made it to 30 kilometers per hour, so we're pretty satisfied of now. And uh, we just have to analyze the results to see if we have enough torque uh, on the engine. But it should be okay, we're pretty satisfied with this. Next morning, team driver Audrey gets her first chance to sit in the car and check out the driving position and the controls. Because of the weather, she won't get to actually drive the car until she gets to Texas. When I want to turn off the engine, I turn the switch like this uh, off. And when I want to start the, in the engine again, I push the start. <laughs> Ooh, <that> <laughs> oh, like this. <laughs> like this, uh, and then uh, we won't uh, do it uh, now. <laughs> Before going to the event in Houston, the team are invited to showcase their car at the prestigious Quebec Auto Show. People uh, always come here and say, hey, what is that? Is this a helicopter? Is this a submarine? I wasn't really sure what it was. I thought it was a bicycle. It looks like a canoe at the back. They think it's a robotic thing. Or something alien. It's a big opportunity to raise awareness of the project and get people thinking about the future of global energy consumption. It's very important to be as efficient as possible to keep resources for the longer amount of time as possible. The more you're efficient, longer resources, petrol, there will be on Earth. With the glamour of the Quebec car show over, the team are back in the workshop, fully focused on fine-tuning the engine. We are ready tonight to make a big testing session. We'll see uh, what the potential of the engine. Uh, we may do some um, simulated lap of the, of the track. Using their specialized indoor testing rig, 
the team try out the run-kill strategy they've used so successfully in Houston before. In 2011, they achieved a fuel efficiency of 3,168 miles per gallon, a record that still stands for the Americas event. In this test, they achieve a figure of just over 700 miles per gallon, a long way off their record, but it's a start. Every team has done its job and we put it together this tonight, bench it, test it, and it worked. What a night. We also uh, succeeded in starting the engine every time, so that's a good thing for us because usually the reliability of the engine is the most important part. Yeah, I think we're in a good way to uh, reach a win at Shelly Comato. With testing over, the team pack up the car and head off on the road to Houston. Testing is one thing. Getting it right at Shell Eco Marathon in Texas is what really counts. South of the border in North Carolina. Oh, we got this! The Dudley Panthers are also pulling out the stops to be ready for Houston. These students from a deprived neighborhood of Greensboro are not only learning about future energy challenges, they're also discovering important life lessons as they build two battery electric cars from junk, a prototype and urban concept. After four weeks of hard work, their vehicles are shaping up nicely. Very good, guys. Next, Mentor Ricky decides his crew could also use an image makeover. Well, all of our mail items are over there. But when you're struggling with a tiny budget, this means a trip to the local thrift store. We're gonna stay below $20. If you can find one for 10, that would be really, really good. Many of these high school kids have only recently arrived in the United States. That look awesome. Huh? For others, buying a sports jacket is a novel experience. You don't put coats on like that, okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Nike. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. And 15. Okay. Is that everything? That's everything. Okay, we have a subtitle of $72.59. Okay, $73 in spending, so it's well worth it. Because people pay attention to what they see first, and then they listen to you. Having dressed themselves like a pro team, Ricky's next plan is for them to see one up close. He's organized a dream fact-finding mission to 2012 NASCAR Sprint Cup champions Penske Racing. They're number one in all of NASCAR. You're gonna look at everything they do. When it's appropriate, you're gonna ask questions mm -hmm. and then learn from it. Today is all right to cheat on the test. Yeah. We're gonna copycat, copy what they do and bring it back to our school and do the same thing in Houston. My dad took me to NASCAR race. I'm just really, really excited. <laughs> Let's go down. Let's go down. Okay. You got it? Surrounded by some of the best engineers on the planet. This is awesome. The Panthers grabbed the opportunity for expert feedback on their urban concept vehicle. Immediately, Penske's engineer spots some simple improvements. You know, I know you're trying to recycle, so you don't really have the choice, you know, it's whatever you find, but whatever you can make the light as possible is, is, is going to help you. Alex's next tip is on the car's aerodynamics. Well, one thing I see with your lights is you have here plexiglass, right? But your lights are sticking outside of it. So if you were to put your lights behind it, then you would theoretically have less drag. And also edges will cause drag as well. So just trying to make the outside of the car as smooth as possible. As an added bonus, up-and-coming Penske racing driver Ryan Blaney drops in to check Rochelle Mezubed's driving skills. I like to see how this thing works if you're ready to get it. Rochelle's a novice driver. During the Panthers' first test drive, 
Nerves caused her to flip her vehicle. Whoa, Whoa my goodness. Is she all right? With her confidence shaken, she has one vital question for Ryan. How do you um not get nervous during races? It's really just time in the car. And time racing with the same guys you do every week. So it's it's hard, but hopefully, uh, hopefully you can get it. Okay. Nice meeting you guys. This is kind of like a motivation right now. So we're just gonna hit it hard now. It was amazing. Inspired by their visit, the team put their Penske lessons to good use and apply aerodynamic modifications to their vehicles. Fueling their determination is a desire to break an unlucky Shell Eco Marathon run. In two previous Houston competitions, James B. Dudley haven't completed the full course due to mechanical failure. You come back in here somewhere. With just one week left, they prepare a final practice course designed to test their car and driver to the limit. Yes. Sharing driving duties with Rochelle is new recruit Muzdalifa Sabri. Okay. Let me put my jacket on. The seat fits, the car fits, I can reach everything, so. Just good. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm kind of nervous. So let's do it. Quickly, it becomes apparent Dudley has two wildly contrasting drivers. Slow it down, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. Whereas Muzdalifa is overly confident. Stop, 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 stop. Rochelle has lost her nerve following her previous crash. Come on, come on, don't stop, come on. She, she's losing that confidence again. But going all the way around, make you a big circle. Okay. Okay, let's go. But practice makes perfect. And gradually, both girls learn to drive in a smooth, energy efficient manner. Okay. There you go. That's what I want right there. She got it. Okay, stop it. Much better. You didn't go as fast. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. There you go. That's what I want. For Rochelle in particular, yeah. The extended seat time gives her a crucial boost. All right, all right, all right, all right. How does it feel? Yes. Ah, it feels good. Okay, okay, all right. I felt good because I didn't do the mistake that I did the last time. I am really confident about it because, you know, that we've worked really hard for this project and I'm pretty sure it's going to pay off. Best of all, with Houston around the corner, neither car has suffered a serious malfunction. I think it was very successful. We're leaps and bounds from what, where we were last year. The vehicle looks pretty good, drives pretty good, um, and I, I think we're in good shape. The kids from Dudley High have pulled it off <laughs> and look set to make an impact in Texas. 5,000 miles south on the Brazilian coast, the E3 team from Florianopolis must send their car to Houston by freight, which means they have less time to prepare than their competitors in North America. They are running out of time to get the car ready, and so far things have gone badly. They've broken all their engines. Lead engineer Pimba is the quiet man of the team. He designed the car and has built most of it. While the rest of the team discuss if they can repair their broken engines, Pimba comes up with a solution. By inserting bolts into the broken crankshafts, he manages to repair the engines and make them stronger than the originals. He made this screw here, and that will give us at least twice the torque resistance we had. So the team are back in action, but now they must make up for lost time, and Rodrigo has a cunning plan. We told all the guys that the car is going to be shipped earlier than it was supposed to be shipped. We're just like lying to them because they usually work better on a tight schedule. Yes, sir, I can open this up. With the team hard at work under the impression they must finish the car by the end of the week, Brenner and Rodrigo are heading to Rio. 
But this is no holiday. They've been invited by Shell to show off last year's car at a conference on the future of energy efficiency and innovation. This event specifically, we talked about how we need to broaden the energy mix and make it cleaner, make it affordable. Shell Eco Marathon is an integral part of that strategy. By showcasing the car that finished seventh last year, the team is raising questions about future energy challenges and mobility. It was not only a good thing to show our work, but it was good to hear about the energy and what they're doing with the environment. And so very important topics that we hear on the news and we should care more about it. Mission accomplished, Rodrigo and Brenner head home to see if their false deadline has had the desired effect. It has. The team have made good progress and the car is almost ready for a test drive. But there's one thing they haven't counted on. The weather. Uh, unbelievable, unbelievable. We were supposed to test the car today, I guess not. The whole of the ground floor of the engineering department is underwater, but thankfully, their car is okay. We used to work on this corridor, you know, and luckily we got moved to a higher place, so if we were in the corridor, the project would be lost, totally. For team driver Christina, it's especially frustrating, as she'll have to wait a bit longer to test out the car. I'll actually have to practice in an imaginary car. They lose a whole day to the flood, and it's looking unlikely that they'll even make their real deadline now. After mopping up, it's all hands on deck to get the car ready for its first test drive. And Rodrigo is feeling the pressure. If something goes wrong, I'll be devastated. Pimba knows the car better than anyone else, so he's in the hot seat for the maiden voyage. Yet again, disaster strikes. Uh, something uh, in the rear wheel broke, and now we're gonna have to take the car back, sit, and have a pleasant conversation. Um, we're students. If we don't break anything, we don't learn from it. So we're supposed to break things, and that's how it works. This time, they broke the screws connecting the flywheel to the rear wheel. So even though the engine is working, the wheels won't turn. We had two screws and both of them broke, and now we are adding four more screws and replacing the two screws that broke. The strengthening complete, they're all set for a second attempt. But will it run this time? Pimba completes a quick test on closed roads around the university campus to make sure there are no major problems. Pimba really pushed the car, you know, at its limit, and that was very, very important. Now it's the moment of truth for Christina, her first chance to drive the car. They told me to go slow first time, just to test. It was really, really great. I'm looking forward to doing it in Houston. It's been an almighty struggle, but they've done it. We're very, very, very relieved that we did this tonight. The car is complete in time to be shipped to the States. Christina has had a test drive, and the team head to Houston, confident of beating their seventh place of last year. I'm really looking forward to being in Shell at Comerton and to see this car coming out of the box and me being able to run it. So it'll be amazing. The end of the road is Houston, where our three teams will compete against over a hundred others to be crowned class winners at Shell Eco Marathon Americas 2013. 
The Road to Houston. Join the journey. See the finale on Shell.com, coming April 19th.